Hi there. This is Carol Merlo. I'm excited to have you guys here tonight. If you can, please mute your audio. Uh, for some reason, everybody came in with their audio enabled, and it's just going to be easier when, when I'm talking if we're muted. If you do have a question, please use the chat, and then I will see you. Thank you. Look at this. How beautiful. So, let me get started right away. And as we get go through this, you're gonna get an inkling of what I'm all about. Let me start here with this first slide. Okay, so I'm called the Inner Game Trainer. And hi, yay, I'm, I'm so excited to have you here. Listen, I started out life early on really feeling very spiritual. I can remember being three years old and getting baptized. And having the minister, it was an Episcopalian minister, held me and then put a little cross made out of holy water on my forehead, gave me a candle, and I was just so proud and excited. And I would go to church. I would go to Sunday school, and I would also go to church because I really loved church. The other thing I loved was school. I loved school. In fact, my favorite subject in school was school. I really didn't like recess that much. I, it was easy for me to learn. So I was also super sensitive. In fact, my mother used to get mad at me saying, you're too sensitive. And I always thought the word sensitive meant there was something wrong with me. So I kind of felt like an alien. Most of my childhood and early on into my adulthood felt a little bit different than everybody else. And I think that was one of the reasons I pursued spirituality so much, because I wanted to make sense of life. What's the point? What is the point of being here in this life? Because as we all know, and as Buddha dis discovered early on, right, everything is pain. There is pain in this realm. So why and what's that about and what do we do about it? So I was driven to find solutions. I started studying metaphysics when I was about 13 and started studying psychology probably the year after that. Was really committed to understanding the human condition and my own sense of who I was in the world. I was a singer. I started singing professionally when I was 14 and I did that until I was 32. And during that time of my life, I was fully engaged in seeking spiritual solutions. So I came upon something called Agni Yoga. Agni Yoga is a, well, at the time it was a mystery school. Agni means light fire. And I learned a meditation technique, uh, typically using the chakra system that I'm, I may get to tonight, but I don't know if I'll have time. And spent 10 years learning how to navigate in consciousness or what we're calling in this webinar, divine realms. Now, what was interesting about that is I really learned how to be spiritual. I learned how to experience energy and frequencies and expand my consciousness, but I still had very low self-esteem, very little emotional intelligence. And so I ended up with some abusive men, had a baby, ended up in a woman's shelter, and started what I call the dark night of the soul. I was about 33 at the time. And this dark, dark night of the soul journey led me for quite a long, many, many years looking for the solution. I kind of abandoned my spiritual path and got fully engaged in psychology. Went to school, uh, got a master's degree, a bachelor's degree in psychology, a master's degree and quit the psychology program because I found out that they were all, that you are basically a black box and you're just a robot, like an animal. And I knew that wasn't true. So I shifted over to the education department, got some training in training. And then when I graduated, I got involved in a direct sales company, selling or actually training and teaching people how to sell and how to understand nutrition. I did that for a long, long time. I still wasn't back on track though. I was still stuck in this dark night of the soul kind of place. 
So I found an organization called Centers for Spiritual Living and through a number of classes and training, years of it actually, I became a licensed spiritual coach. And I've been doing that for about the last 10 years. So my approach is a combination of psychology and spirituality, as you will see in a minute. Now, I want to talk about sensitivity, because sensitivity is really important when we're talking about spiritual awareness. It's a double-edged sword. And as you can see from this slide, there are actually people, about 20% of the population, that are called highly sensitive people. And if you are one of those, go ahead and put in the chat and you can say, yes, that's me. And I'd appreciate that. I know who you are. And what, what's interesting about sensitive people is they're more reactive or responsive to the environment physically, emotionally, and socially. Yes, great. I totally get it. Now, so you feel things deeply, whether it's positive or negative. And so these are the people that experience this expanded consciousness typically, right? Because you're sensitive and you're aware. The problem with, or like the other side of the double-edged sword, is then you have nervous system, your nervous system is, uh, what is it called? Sympathetic. So you react to things quickly, easily. You have augmented senses. This tip, like autistic people have uh, augmented senses, right? Where maybe it's too loud or you're a super taster or you're sensitive to touch or you're sensitive, you walk into a room and you're empathic and you can feel the energy in the room. A lot of people who are sensitives are highly spiritual. They seem to go hand in hand. And the other side is you can be prone to depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, and addiction because you're sensitive. So you've got this opportunity to have this great spiritual awareness. At the same time, you're, you get pounded by the life experience. And I think I can help with that tonight. So let me tell you a little bit about how I fell in love with chi coils. Now, if you haven't seen this movie, Inside Out 2, go see it. It's an animation, and they have these emotion characters. And the storyline is that this girl is going into puberty. And before that, when she was young, she just had like happiness and sadness and that kind of thing, anger. But when she becomes a young adult or a teenager, she starts to experience anxiety. And this is the picture, this little anxiety character here. And so the thing, anxiety, how anxiety describes herself, because it's a female character, is that her job is to be in control of everything, to make sure that nothing goes wrong. So she's always on the lookout, always needs to dominate, always needs to make sure that she's safe and wants to control everything. Well, that was me. I after having this lifetime of, well, ups and downs, like a lot of people, I tended toward making sure that everything was okay and that I was safe. So I would say my default emotional state was anxiety, but I didn't know that and still, until I started using chi coils. Isn't that a trip? So anyway, I found out about this from my husband. He introduced me. And I bought this little one here, this one here, this mini coil, and started using it. Oh, man, was it great. Literally great. I started using a frequency. I used the in the basic, there's restore and regenerate. They're my two favorites, even still. And I would meditate to them. It was wonderful. And what I experienced was, you know, like you ever had, you, you've seen an empty swimming pool, right? And you take a hose and you start filling the swimming pool in super slow. Well, this was like a fire hose filling the swimming pool of my consciousness and energy. And I started to become highly aware of frequencies and lit I would walk around and feel I could feel it. I, it was like I was drinking it in. It blew me away. 
within, I would say, two weeks, I started experiencing a transformation in my emotional state to where I was very relaxed around people. I didn't anticipate the disaster. I just was calm about everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was amazing. Yeah. Oh, other people have experienced that too. That's so cool. So what I recognized is, oh, this is real. Because I, I posted on Facebook what I was experiencing. Some guy says, oh, yeah, the placebo effect is really great. And I said, well, listen, if you want, I'll show you the science on this. Because people don't recognize until they really understand what this is and what you have in your hands tonight. So it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. I started sharing it with some of my friends, and they had the exact same experience. I had one lady text me afterwards. Uh, she came over. She tried it for like a half an hour, hour, something like that. And she told me that she was completely relaxed. Then another lady I shared it with, 48 hours. She writes back to me, I was completely stress-free for 48 hours. This is a woman that's been dealing with a, woman, a mother with Alzheimer's, a husband who's starting to experience cognitive decline, a lot of stressors in her life, completely relaxed for two full days after having one chi coil session. So it's really, really awesome and intense and wonderful. So that was great. Then we got this, this bigger one here, this one with the two chi coils. And I got to experience what is called scalar energy. And I'm going to share about that later on. But I still like this little one. You have to have it right next to your body for it to work. This one, the coils are about two inches wide. And you can feel, oh, I'd say like 10 to 12 feet. Okay, a small room, for example. And so they have these ones that are five inches that are much more powerful and then big ones that are two feet across and they're called aura coils. Really amazing. I've been experiencing those. And in fact, we've got them in our house for a while. And I have a son who is uh, sensitive. <laughs> and so after about a month, of just being in the environment. Oh, he's like calm, peaceful, easy to get along with. It's amazing just being around it. Even if you're not consciously using the coils, you start to experience something. All right, next slide. Now I'm going to use this as kind of a template here. So what you can see on the outside, this is your ideal scene. This is the divine within you. Peace, wisdom, creativity, insight, safety, wholeness, joy, love, and peace. Beautiful. But what's inhibiting or blocking you from experiencing these levels, these ex divine realms, for lack of a better word, are past conflicts, past losses, fear of failure, fatigue, pain, illness, self-esteem issues. And so this is you inside this giant uh, circle that I'm going to show you right now in a minute so you can understand this. But I wanted you just to imprint this picture for a minute so you can see where I'm going with it, okay? So the question is, why do we keep on yo-yoing? So in your life, I'm going to just project out there. It's true for me. It's probably true for you. I have made attempts okay, I'm going to meditate every day for 20 minutes. And I start meditating and it's hard. It, my brain is all over the place. It's frustrating. Oh yeah, I got to breathe. Yeah, all that kind of technique stuff. And then, ah, good. Yes. And then I give up or, oh, I'm going to start eating super healthy or I'm going to work out or whatever it is, we have these emotional commitments to an idealized goal that we do not accomplish. We do for a little bit, and then we go back. So what we want to experience is getting past this yo-yoing so we can actually have a reasonable expectation of a positive, conscious state consistently. And I'll tell you what, I'm 
better, much better at doing this consistently. I would say a good 80% of the time, maybe even more. And it's really nice to have that support from the cheek coils and the frequencies so that I can maintain that stability. Now, two of the, I'm sure you've heard about this, right? We, we want to avoid pain or pursue purpose. Now, if you look at this little person on this teeter-totter here, see the monster at the bottom? Well, that monster is the monster of survival. It looks like a monster. It feels like a monster. Why? Because the drive to survive is more senior than any other drive. And then in front of that little monster is a hammer. That hammer protects you so that if you backslide all the way to the monster, and that monster can be anything from divorce to suicide to disease to poverty, whatever your monster is, it's back there motivating you to move forward. And then you've got this loving cup and your heart and everything that you're pursuing. But what happens when we're on the, the fear of pain end of it, we keep sliding back. Like you get pretty good and then you kind of slide back. And then all of a sudden the hammer hits you and then you pursue, 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 but it's stressful and hard. And then you slide back. And so the hammer gets bigger and bigger, and that's to save you from the scary monster. On the other side, when you intentionally choose your life, when you intentionally choose to become more aware, more consistent, to, to choose the love and the goals and the purpose that you have, what happens is this monster gets really little, the hammer shrinks down and the love and your goals become much easier to achieve. See how this little guy's going down now? And this little monster and the hammer are always going to be there. You're, they're your survival mechanism. In case a disaster happens or some trauma or whatever, it's going to keep you from losing it. And so this is a really good way of, of picturing for yourself where you want to be. Do you want to avoid pain or do you want to pursue your purpose? Now, most of us, from what I'm seeing here, is that we're stuck, right? You get stuck. So you want to experience the expansive nature of the universe and the love and the peace and the deep connection and all that kind of stuff. That's enlightened consciousness, cosmic consciousness. And yet you're stuck in this behavior, same old, same old, same old, same old. Well, let me show you through this little diagram here why that is. So here's this current stuck state where you are typically. And then here's this wall. And I'm gonna show you the wall in a minute. And then these arrows represent expanded consciousness, expansion. And on the outside of expansion, these divine realms, you've got the worldview and joy and serenity, connectedness, wisdom, courage, all those wonderful things and states. They're actually um, psychological or consciousness states that you get to experience when you're out, when you're past this wall and you're out. Now let's look at the wall. Check out the wall. Here's you in this bubble of consciousness and you actually have an energetic field that I'm going to show you in a minute but outside of that energetic field between you and this divine consciousness is the wall poor self-esteem counter intention what that means is either you having inner conflicts or you having uh, external conflicts with people that are blocking you from pursuing your passion fatigue illness physical pain Conflicts from the past, self-recrimination, where you keep on going back to, oh, if I had only done it better. Fear of failure, oh, what if I don't succeed? And past losses. These things hammer you and keep you stuck. Right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, good. Well, let's say you get out. You confront, you do your meditation, you're doing your spiritual progress, 
you're really releasing some of that stuff, you're handling it, and then you get out there in consciousness or in meditation, and you forgot to create an intention. You forgot to use affirmations. You didn't build up your spiritual practice. So when you get out, there's nothing there. And what happens is you snap all the way back to the old state. Boom. Yo-yo consciousness. So the idea is what can you do to not get into this contracted consciousness or this yo-yoing and stay out? So when you experience the power and the passion, I wonder how I do this. Um, I don't know how to do this, huh? It's, a, it's got a really great animation, but I don't know how to do this on this share screen thing. So basically the thing is you got to use the tools. You're not going to grow. Yeah, and some people experience it quickly. Thank you, Rick. So you're not going to grow. You're not going to stay out. You're not going to stay in these spiritual states that you want without using. And I, honest to God, I believe this is the truth. Chi coils, sound frequencies, intentional meditation, and thought shifting. Now, as a coach, I teach intentional meditation and thought shifting. And now that I have become more familiar with chi coils and sound frequencies, I am a huge advocate because it's worked for me and it's worked for friends. So here's the truth of the matter. Everything's frequencies. Everything. Everything. I don't care if it's the atom of a, of a rock or a little molecule, however rocks are constructed, to the whole entire universe, whether it looks like it's empty space or not. All consciousness although in the manifest universe has a frequency. The only thing that does not have a frequency is the source energy. That source energy is called chi. It is without frequency. Imagine that. And all frequency emerges from it. So you can break through your barriers with chi coils and frequencies. There's two that I really recommend. Now take notes because I'm going to recommend some frequencies for you tonight. The first are the ones in basic restore and regenerate. Really awesome. And you, they're even free online. These are so useful to have in when you start meditating consistently because they're easy to listen to and they're pleasant. Now, when you get into the more the quantum and higher quantum, the frequencies can get complex. A lot of times it's not as easy to listen to, but if you have your coils and you've turned everything on, you can turn the sound off and still get the benefit. This is really important. And if any, if you have questions about that kind of stuff, just let me know and we can talk about it. Okay, next. So here it is. And you've probably already seen this slide. Nikola Tesla says, if, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So we are pure energy having a physical experience. Everything has, see where it says a magnetic field here, protected by a magnetic field or held together. I want to explain to you the actual science of this so you have a better understanding and why the chi coils work. So first of all, everything has an energy field. Have you ever, when you were a kid, did you ever get like uh, iron filings and get a piece of paper and put a magnet underneath and, and watch the iron filings make this little pattern, this pattern here, they, this double torus pattern? This is what happens with magnetic energy. So you can see it here with two magnets that connect together and the earth has a magnetic field. It also has a gravitational field. And so do you see here that it says there's three energy fields, electric, magnetic, and gravitational. And moving electricity creates magnetic fields and moving magnets create electrical charges or fields. They are interwoven. They work together and that's why it's called electromagnetic. So consciousness, let's pose, 
that consciousness is also electromagnetic. And I'm going to give you a specific. There's a game with placing a hair on a bald figure moving. Oh, yeah, I remember that game. Moving tiny ma ma magnet fabrics. Gosh, that was years ago. But I remember that game. And he had a, did he have a red nose? I forget. Anyway, so here's you. Now, if you didn't know this, here's the phenomenal news. You are not just a body. You are a sphere. I said it's a Taurus, but a sphere. And, and it's a biofield is what it's called. And you can see these chakras here and how energy is moving through there because the chakras also have their own field and their own magnetic energy. Where do you place the chi coil when you use the quantum frequency? I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Thank you for bringing it up. Okay, so electromagnetic, magnetic, electric, and subtle energies. What do I mean by subtle energies? Those that science is not able to detect yet and yet are very uh, real. High frequency energy, the energy of love, the energy of wisdom, the energy of wholeness, the energy of joy. These are called subtle energies and they do impact everything, all consciousness. So let's talk about how we can shift our brain waves. Now that I've given you a little foundation, let's talk about the tools, how to create an intention and practice intentional meditation. I won't get to that tonight, I, but I do want to uh, answer all your questions at the end. So after a little while, we'll just stop this slideshow and you can ask me some questions. Let's start here. Your brain waves mirror your cognitive, emotional, and physical states. So whatever you're thinking, it has a frequency. Whatever you're feeling, it has a frequency. Yeah, everything is frequency. You are frequency. And see these little, this is an EEG picture, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about what those frequencies are at the in a little bit. So I want to introduce this principle called entrainment. And this is the key to the whole thing, honest to Pete. So here's two energy fields, two beings in energy fields. And this comes from heart math, by the way, if you've ever looked at heart math, it talks about the relationship between the heart and the brain and the energy exchange. And so, you know, see here, imagine this was a Venn diagram, and this is where these two, two spheres interact or connect. This is called entrainment. And entrainment happens with just about everything because you are very sensitive and you can pick up stuff pretty easily. Let's look at entrainment more from a scientific standpoint. Your brain frequencies align and synchronize when an external frequency like a sound or electromagnetic energy is introduced. These oscillation patterns influence your emotional responses, cognitive fun functions, and motor control. When the brain waves are synchronized, a specific state of consciousness will result. Okay, so what does this mean? Let's look here. Um, this see where these parts of your brain get impacted so there's something external that gets introduced to your brain. Let's say it's a sound and your brain is all like crazy and hyper and stuff. Well, it's a, say it's a, it's a sound like a delta wave. Well, pretty soon, or an alpha wave even, pretty soon your brain, I would say within 15 minutes, typically your brain will start harmonizing or synchronizing with that external frequency, and that's called entrainment. Here's the science. Cool science. So these are PET scans. So here's a person, it's a normal person, and you can see that their um, unbalanced brainwave pattern, uh, prone to anxiety, depression, weakened mental and emotional health. And then after using 15 minutes of theta, you can start to see the synchronizing take place. And after 25 minutes, it's balanced. Now, are you willing to sit 
with your chi coils and your sound frequencies. And if you don't have chi coils yet, just use the sound frequencies for 25 minutes and allow your brain to be synchronized. Watch what will happen in your life if you do this consistently. Let's look at this next slide. Is it working? There we go. So when the body or mind is out of balance, sound, frequ sound frequencies can help to entrain you and bring you back into balance. So this key word, entrainment, is really important. It also it has not only to do with sound, it has to do with other frequencies, other electromagnetic frequencies. Let's look at some of the benefits of sound healing. Now, most everybody out there, if you say, you know, have you ever heard of sound healing? They'll go, yeah, and they know about like uh, crystal bowls and that kind of thing. Or you can go online to YouTube and you can get your sound healing frequencies, which are really great, really, really great. So music and sound frequencies can impact your emotions and your energy levels. They'll help you calm yourself. Ah, oh, like listening to crickets. There's a frequency that's a sleep frequency and it sounds like crickets, just the best. You can rebalance your chakras and release stuck energy and experience deep healing. You can improve your sleep and pain, lower your blood pressure, decrease your risk of heart disease, and it'll support your entire well-being, include, including changing your outlook. Now, say you're in a funk. We get in a funk, right? So say you're you're just going along and all of a sudden something happens, something irritates you, and now you're in a funk. Turn on a frequency. You can shift your consciousness using entrainment and using sound frequencies. Now, this study here show, was done on the singing bowls and mood intention and well-being showing that people can definitely reduce, notice it one hour long. Now, I'm not necessarily saying meditate for an hour a day, but you can certainly listen to these sounds while you're getting ready for work, while you're at your computer, in the evening while you're eating. You can turn these on and listen to the frequencies. Okay, another, another study here. This one is on pain. People with fibromyalgia. Now, if, um, let me, oh, let me scroll down uh, here. Yes, classical music, yes. Gregorian chants, yes, exactly. Um, the frequencies in those in that music impacts how you're going to feel. So this is amazing because it also impacts your perception of pain. Fibromyalgia is a condition where you are hypersensitive. Your skin is hypersensitive. It hurts to be touched. It hurts to be touched. You're in that much pain. And so people with fibromyalgia are constantly seeking solutions. And sound frequencies are a terrific way to soothe you. Now let's look at these key frequencies that I've picked out for you. So we've got Wisdom. This is in quantum. If you have quantum, then you can get meditate, enlighten, focus, and abundance. These are simple ones. They're really wonderful to listen to. I'm going to play one for you. I'm going to play the recharge and regenerate. These are the basic ones. So I'm going to shift over and I'm going to play recharge. I have to move all stuff on my screen here. So...
But as I listen, it starts to calm down and I become centered. So Regenerate is very, very powerful for getting you centered, especially in the beginning. All right, I'm going to try and turn this off and then go back to my other screen. So bear with me for a second here. Okay, so those are the two basic ones. You can also go to quantum and get all of these other ones, which is really great. I'm scrolling down. It does work, absolutely. All right, next. Now, when I talk to people and I say, have you ever heard of um, chi? Most people will say yes. Have you ever heard of rife frequencies? Some people will say yes, many people will not. So this guy, Royal Rife, inver in, he, in, he invented a microscope. This is way back when, look at this, in the 20s, I believe, where microscopes were all brand new. And he started to realize that uh, diseases had a frequency. So he started to develop all these different frequencies and test them using this machine that he created. And he actually cured 16 patients of cancer, which is pretty amazing. Now, guess what? The medical community wasn't in favor of this. And so um, his, his work was basically just suppressed and nobody ever really heard about it or thought about it till about the 70s. And then people started replicating his uh, machines and his frequencies. There are over 10,000 of these rife frequencies. These are things like, um, uh, let's see, retinopathy, um, tendinitis, uh, broken bone, asthma, arthritis, cancer, you name it. Literally, you name it, there's a rife frequency out there. And this is great. Rife frequencies work really, really well. Um, we recommend, David recommends that you don't listen to rife frequencies, that you turn on your chi coils and you turn on the rife frequencies and then you keep the chi coils close to you and go about your day, okay? Or sit at your computer or whatever. I have uh, issues with my low back. I have used the low back rife frequency and literally it takes 10 to 15 minutes for the pain to go away. Pretty awesome. Now I wanna to talk to you because we were talking earlier about classical music and we also have Gregorian chants and those are called solfeggio frequencies. If you were a music major like me, you learned solfege, solfeggio, the scale, the musical scale. And we learned how to sing it. I was a singer, so I learned how to sing it, guitar players play it, etc. Hi, hello, Tracy Robbins. Okay, so let's look at some of these. So phagio fre frequencies offer sound patterns that promote relaxation, stress relief, and overall well-being. These frequencies have been shown to positively impact mental, emotional, and physical health by generating vibrations that help achieve a state of calm and balance. Each frequency has a unique healing proper property and can be used to address different physical, emotional, and spiritual issues. So now we go to, and if you, you have your online access to the frequencies, you can go to the solfeggio frequencies, pretty easy. It's in quantum, it's called super solfeggio. So this is really cool. Look at these different ones. Um, Fear of guilt, deep healing, managing pain, transformation, connecting in relationship, intuition, inner strength, and higher mind. And I believe there's also one more after this, which um, is uh, incorporates all of them. And so this is one of my go-tos is the solfeggio frequencies. Really, really neat. Now, I've only started to tell you about the frequencies, but I'll tell you what, uh, it got pretty confusing. So you go, now, where was that one I played yesterday? And if you're like me, you can get pretty confused. So what I did was I created a directory 
of all of the different um, frequencies and where they're located. And if you would like, you can email me uh, hwhcaro, oh, there it is, carol at gmail.com, and I will send this to you. It's very helpful. And that way you don't get uh, caught up in spending 10, 15 minutes trying to remember the frequency you played yesterday that was really awesome. Okay. Okay, next. Let's talk about PEMF. So remember, I was talking about we are electromagnetic. We have a field and we are responsive through the principle of entrainment. So PEMF is pulsed electromagnetic frequency. And, and I did some research when I really wanted to understand what this is because I when I first got introduced to chi coils, I had no idea. So every cell in your body produces electromagnetic fields. Every cell produces electromagnetic fields. And cells communicate with each other using electromagnetic frequencies. PEMF therapy uses electrical energy to send tiny magnetic pulses through the body, penetrating the cells, tissues, and organs without being absorbed. This stimulates the cells and allows them to reboot their chemical and electrical processes to function normally again so the body can begin to repair itself. Okay, sharing the email again at the, okay, yes, it's H-W-H, I'll type it in, goody. I got to look around my thing to get it. Whoops, that didn't work. <laughs> Carol at gmail.com. Okay, great, back to the top. So, PEMF treats a wide range of ailments, huge reduces pain and inflammation, alleviates the negative effects of stress on the body, improves energy and sleep, repairs injured bone or soft tissue, lowers your blood pressure, incre increases circulation, and augments meditation. Now, this is what turned me on. I mean, I love all this other stuff, right? This phys physical stuff, really important, especially as we age. But the fact that I could sit down to meditate and it usually would take me a good 10 15 minutes of random brain you know thinking 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 distracted planning um nervousness what if all that kind of stuff to being completely centered within two to three minutes that's when i got impressed i thought wow if chi coils can do that with me and I, I could tell the difference. I can turn on the sound frequency and then I'll take the chi coils and put them. I usually put one in front of me and one behind me. And I'll show you the configuration in a minute. And as soon as I do that, I, can, I go, Ook! and I like drop in and start to experience the energy, the shift in the energy in my body and my mind. So it's really, really cool. Okay, now I want to tell you one other thing, kind of a, a little pivot, but not too much. And it's called Schumann resonance. And is it is related to PEMF. And this is the electromagnetic frequency generated by the Earth's magnetic field. And so these resonances, it's 7.83 hertz. And it um, it's very, very small amplitude. It's not like a super loud frequency that you're going to hear, right? But you can, it impacts you through entrainment and impacts your health and your well being. Okay. And so this is how they get created, which is pretty cool. So human resonance affects us, it impacts the cells, it impacts the cells. And NASA started doing studies. So this is really interesting, you guys. And I love this slide. It's a little busy for me, but it says everything. So they did these experiments a while back. They would put people in these magnetically shielded vaults under the ground. to So they would be completely uh, 
there would be no electromagnetic frequencies of any kind, pulsed or unpulsed, influencing them. And the people started to get sick. And so they recognized that this there is some frequencies, electromagnetic frequencies that the body really needs. They were concerned about EMF. And EMF, as you know, is the frequencies from cell phones and TVs and the wires and all that kind of stuff that can have a negative effect on people's health. So they thought, well, we'll just eliminate that. Well, you can't eliminate it because you need to have some frequencies that impact you. Otherwise you get sick. We are connected to this planet. We are connected. We're born here. We are part of this biosphere of the planet. And so these frequencies impact us in a deep, deep way. So what they did was they used the Schumann resonance and they added that in. So now these people had no EMF and just Schumann resonance, and lo and behold, they started to get healthy again. NASA picked up on this. Now, if you get into the moon's atmosphere, you are not subject to any EMF frequencies from the planet, right? And so in order for the astronauts to say, stay healthy, they introduced, in fact, it's actually put into their uh, their little, what do you call that, outfit, their costume, the thing they wear, they have um, uh, uh, Schumann frequency, PEMF, integrated into their outfits. So they're constantly experiencing that when they're in space. Incredible. 2,000 medical PEMF studies. And NASA has really, really taken this to an extreme level of helping people understand the power of frequencies. So now PEMF devices are pretty popular. If you have not heard of it, I, I'm ama amazed, <clears throat> excuse me. So what you do, so most of them are mats. See this one where you lay on it? You have them for horses. You can lay down outside. You can lay down on this and notice the prices. Okay, here's the deal with these mats. They're all one frequency. You can't get more than one frequency in one of these PEMF devices. One frequency. And that's great. And people have great benefits, but it's very, very limited. Okay. So just remember that. Now I'm going to shift over and pivot a minute to crystal resonance because most people are aware of crystals. I love going to crystal stores. We have a, a store over here just not that far from us where we're putting in these aura coils and you walk in and all kinds of crystals. They're just lovely and wonderful. And you will talk to people that sell them and they will tell you that the different frequencies come from the different crystal structures. Okay. So different crystals are going to have their own unique vibrations. And that's really great. It was all we could rely on for the longest time. And then when I found out about the chi coils, and they also have crystals embedded in them, this really helps. So you're getting crystal frequencies times, I don't know, a thousand, right? With the PEMF and with the sound frequencies. So the chi coils really augment that as well. All right, so let's, the chi coils com combine the Taurus sacred field, which I talked about in the very beginning, and entrainment, sound healing, which also includes rife frequencies, PEMF, and scalar, which I'm going to talk about now. Okay. And even more than this, but these are the main ones. And these are these new five inch coils. Aren't they awesome? They have their own little stand and the stand has its own um, geometric stuff in it, which augments the coils. All right, next. Understanding yin, yang, and scalar. Now, this is really important when you're using chi coils. Took me a while to figure this out too. Now, I've known about yin and yang for years, right? But it's it's important to understand how that works in terms of chi coils. So I tried to figure it out with the science. So here is 
on your left, you've got the magnetic pole of the earth, right? And notice there's a there's a geographic pole and there's a magnetic pole. pole. So the rotation of the earth is not exactly aligned with the magnetic pole. And this pole, magnetic pole shifts periodically. I forget how often, maybe every 10,000 years or something like that, okay? And they call it the South, this, this is crazy. The South magnetic pole because the North end of a compass needle is attracted to it. So the magnetic field lines are pointed towards that area. And the North magnetic pole is near the South geographic pole. Okay, now we have the spin. We have the spin of, if you're in the North Pole, the Earth is spinning left. On the South Pole, the North Earth is spinning right. Okay, if you have, if you have one coil, it's yin. And then here's a magnet. Check out this magnet. So you have North, and there's the energy. Here's this thing that looks like a torus and the South Pole, right? Okay, now, the Earth's magnetic field, notice how this is a double torus? It's that same thing, and the rotation and the magnetic field support each other. They call it a magnetosphere. And so this is very, very powerful. And remember, this is the planet, and this is you. Whoops, 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 go back. I clicked on it and it went to the next screen. Okay, you're just like that. You're an electromagnetic sphere of energy. It's subtler than the physical form and yet it's just as real and just as impactful. Now the chi coils impact this field, this energy field that you are in. Your chakras also are a little electromagnetic fields. They spin just like the planet spins. And the coils, if you have two coils, one is a yang coil, one is a yin coil. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, next thing. So the goal is to have energetic balance. All right, we, and this is the best picture I could find for this. You don't wanna to be too yin or too yang, and I'll show you why. Let's talk about just using the yin coil only. And the reason the little mini one, the uh, the smaller kind of bronze colored chi coil that's just one is yin is because the yin is awesome, okay? I used only yin for about the first, I'd say month. Because every time I used yang with it, it I couldn't, my meditation got all wonky and it's because I needed to receive, I needed to receive. So my mental and physical energy had been so depleted that the yin filled me. And I will periodically still use this for inward focus during meditation. You can also do like yin in the morning. I believe it's this way. Yin at night, yang in the morning, if you want. Let me show you yang. So yang is gonna make you motivated and enhance your concentration, elevate your energy. So it's gonna motivate. Now say you're it's lunch and now after lunch, I don't know about you, but I always get a little sleepy. Then, uh, very good. Then what happens is I need a little yang. So I will get the yang coil and use that and with very shortly, I'm completely back balanced and energized again. So you have a choice. You can also use both coils. And this is the image I was talking to you about earlier, this one here. So you, using both coils at the same time creates a sense of balance and scalar energy, which is what we're gonna get into next. And you can go to this website. Now I'm gonna wait here for a minute so you can, um, oh shoot, hold on. Every time I click something, it goes to the next slide. Fill this in, chicoil.com slash setup two. And you can download a PDF that will show you the different configurations. On one side, it shows all the two, two coil options and what you will benefit from using them in any kind of configuration. 
The other side is just using one coil and how to do that. So it's a very valuable tool. Please, please, please download it. All right, now the last thing tonight is scalar energy. So in between two coils, you have these things called Tesla waves. And the technology and the science of this, that thank you, Bill, for putting that in there, is uh, very interesting because remember in the beginning, I was saying that everything is frequency except for chi? Chi is scalar energy. It has no frequency. It is basically out of phase. So when you're putting one coil on one side of you and one coil on the other, in the middle, you get this scalar energy, which is truly transformational. So just think of all the things we've talked about so far, the sound frequencies, then the chi coils, and then adding the chi coils in a configuration so that you get scalar energy. So what is scalar energy? Well, it's produced when there's two equal but opposite waves collide and converge. This is all science, people. The opposing frequencies cancel each other out and keeps them in one place. But the law of conservation of energy says that energy can't be created or destroyed, just converted. So it leaves a longitudinal static or stationary form of energy with zero frequency. Okay, zero point energy. Exactly, Rick. That's exactly what it is. So we can also call this etheric energy. So what is etheric energy? See the on the bottom right here, this picture of this uh, field, energy field? The energy in the energy field is called etheric energy. And you can also call this the etheric body. And because it's part of you, and yet it's subtler. It's the more sensitive you are, the easier it is to feel this. If you're an empath and you walk into a room, you can feel the energy field in the room of the combination of all the other people, right? That's etheric energy. So scalar cancels out all EMF, all harmful EMF. Wow. And it's, it's so the universe is not a vacuum, but it's filled with scalar energy in which the energies are balanced, which causes them to become invisible. So when you go out into space, it looks like an empty void, like William Shatner talked about when he went out there, like, oh my God, look at this. It's really empty. He had no idea. <laughs> but it's not empty. It's full. It's full. It's full of chi. Okay, the next slide. So scalar energy doesn't really heal anything, but it provides the atmosphere for the body to heal itself. If scalar waves remove chaotic impedance, which is that noise, right? The Like when I was talking in the beginning about being a sensitive and you walk in and there's all this chaotic energy out there um, or sound or whatever it is, it's overwhelming to your senses. Scalar energy removes that. It's wonderful. Any garbled information, it just allows your body to relax. So it does all of these different things and it's truly, truly, truly amazing. And in a minute, I'm gonna ask you, let you ask me questions about this. So this is a very interesting slide. And what it does is it compares the different frequencies. So remember Rife, we talked about Rife in the very beginning. It's this one little band of frequency. You add binaural beats. Who's heard of binaural beats and has used them? And if you don't know what that is, put a thumbs down and I'll explain it. Okay, is quantum healing the zero point? Oh, good question. Let's talk about that in a second. Okay, so my question right now is binaural beats. Now I did this for years. This is all I had in sound frequencies. Put in, I put on headphones, have one frequency in one ear, one in the other, they cancel out in the middle of your brain. Really wonderful. Then we look at quantum frequency. Maybe this will answer your question. 
Mike, Nikki, sorry. Okay, quantum frequency here. Now, remember, he's got these quite a few different levels, doesn't he? So quantum frequencies are very complex and dynamic. But if you go into the higher quantum uh, frequencies, then you're going to get a complete, I mean, it's, it's so complex, you can't even figure it out, but you can hear it, but you it doesn't really sound that different, but just know that David has spent years coming up with these frequencies so that they will do exactly what he says that they will do. Then, now I'm not sure if this is what this means, but I think this means a dynamic intention matrix means, remember when I showed you that black slide, like you, you, you can bust out of that wall and then you go into nothing. And then you snap right back because you didn't do a dynamic, you didn't do an intention. So when you're intentional with your consciousness, it merges or synchronizes with the frequencies and you get much greater depth. And then you combine all of these frequencies and get scalar at the end, which is pretty cool. Okay, last question. What's a divine realm? So I hope I explained this uh, answer because this is not a term I typically use. I call it states of consciousness, power of thought. Very good. Yes. So you're it. You can call it anything you want. You can call it God, the universe, Ki, Ki, or Chi, depending on which country. Ashe, that's African, Mana, Hawaiian, Christ, Theta, that's Scientology, the soul, the light, Prana, which is Indian. Scalar, and on this side is more of scientific terms. Scalar energy, quantum field. Zero point energy, unified field, the matrix, nature, life force, consciousness, creation, the force, the mind, and presence. And it's not out there. As I think I've demonstrated, you're it. You are completely composed of this. And you aren't all of it, but all of it, all of you are is it. Does that make sense? Now, it's called uh, panentheism is the name of that. So life is infinite energy. Oh, here we go. Let me try clicking this thing and see if this spins around. There. Isn't that gorgeous? Life is infinite energy coupled with limitless, the limitless creative capacity. It's the invisible essence and substance of every visible form. Its nature is goodness, truth, wisdom, beauty, as well as energy and imagination. And this is you. You're living in this dynamic sphere of radiant energy. It's always there and always available to you. And as you align your consciousness, your thinking day-to-day -day of consciousness with this, then what happens is you expand. Every thought or feeling you have is connected to a wave. Everything is a wave. And knowing that your thoughts are simply frequencies, when you're sitting there meditating and you go, oh, this horrible thought, Mary, what did she do, blah, blah, blah. Then you go, oh, that's just a frequency. It minimizes it and it empowers you to take control over your thoughts because then you realize, oh, you're welcome. You realize who you are. You are the power that impacts and influences every one of these thoughts. Now I'm gonna, got a little bit more to go here. So I wanna talk about the three measurable levels of consciousness. These are all associated with frequencies. So you have super conscious or hyper alert. It's associated with gamma brain waves. They have found that advanced meditators are, generate gamma brain waves and uh, typically are there most of the time. Okay, the conscious mind, that's you right now. It's your beta brain and sometimes alpha. And then the subconscious. This is the greater percentage of you. Last week with Galit, I think that's how you say it. She had this beautiful image of a uh, iceberg and showed that like the majority of you is in the subconscious, 95%. And so it's accessing this and allowing whatever's there to come to the surface to be revealed 
and to be transformed is when you start to become free. And the cheek oils, sometimes you'll just sit there and watch them. Inner, well, I watch them in my mind, transform these thought forms. It's really cool. So here's what it looks like. You can see the super, super conscious is gamma. Then you have the conscious mind with beta and alpha and the subconscious mind with theta, delta and alpha. Now, this is the introduction to my meditation course. I'm going to go over these frequencies very quickly. One person that is very, very, very knowledgeable about all of this is Joe Dispenza. If you have not heard of him, he's pretty amazing. Okay, so here's the busy beta brain. This is what happens as soon as you sit down to meditate. And it's, you're thinking of this and that and this and that. And in fact, high level beta, do I have to click on this thing? How is that going to work? Oh, there we go. This is, notice it's still beta brain, but it's you in emergency mold, mode. So it was me at the beginning with this intense anxiety thing, conversation going on underneath in my subconscious that I really wasn't even aware of. And typically when people are in high level beta, that's when they resort to food, sex, drugs, TV, or sleep because they can't manage it. They don't know how to get out of this beta consciousness. And it really is very unpleasant and it, it's a vicious cycle. It's more than just a yo-yo. You're stuck when you're in this. And it's, it's critical that people learn how to manage high level beta because it is going to result in cardiovascular disease, uh, greater levels of cortisol, which are inflammation, so pain throughout your body, et cetera. Not good. Alpha, and everybody's probably heard of alpha. Oh yes, I love Joe too. Okay, when your inner world starts becoming more real than your outer world. So when you sit down and start meditating and you turn on your coils, listen to a frequency, you start to breathe more easily and your brain starts to shift from beta to alpha. This alpha brain relaxes you. It, you stop having analyzing and trying to figure it all out, uh, plan, doing your planning and your regret and all that kind of stuff. That event, that starts to just melt away and you're in this lovely diffused state called alpha. Typically in historical uh, studies of meditation, they only knew about alpha until Joe Dispenza, really. Okay, then we have theta. Theta is typically where you're asleep, in deep sleep. However, uh, advanced meditators can stay in the state of the theta instead of going to sleep. And so it's a shift and I play with that, you know, am I going to sleep or can I shift my consciousness so I am tuned in and centered and peaceful and expanded? And so I play with theta quite a bit. Then we have delta and Tibetan monks, um, they, they release, they also release, excuse my, excuse my tongue. They achieve delta waves. And they do this by putting these little um, receptor things, wires on people's brains and then let them meditate. And they figure out what waves they're generating. And this last one is gamma. Gamma, I spoke about earlier, is really peak performance. This is a high state of creativity. Kids are early on in theta in order to learn, then it fades away. Oh, that's interesting to know. Cool. All right, next is this lovely, lovely video on YouTube. And this is that thing I was telling you about with the wires. So they put meditators and started feeling or figuring out, detecting what frequencies they were using. And these advanced meditators are in gamma, which let me show you this next slide. I hope I'm not going too fast for you. Blah, 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 long-term meditators. Okay, here I go. Next one. Oh, just by the way, that YouTube is called Superhumans, if you want to watch it. It's very cool. And Daniel Goleman is an amazing researcher on frequencies and consciousness. Okay, so here's all the frequencies in one place. See how fast gamma is? It's a very fast frequency. 
So you're studying, you're resolving problems, you're in the creative process, like you're writing a song or, you know, something strikes you and you just feel like you're downloading it. That's gamma. Then there's beta, which is your analytical, busy, daily mind. Alpha, where you start to be relaxed. Theta, which you may or may not get into in for a while. And then delta, which is typically sleep. So it's all of these different frequencies. And remember, every one of these frequencies is aligned with a thought or a feeling. So you generate a thought, it has a frequency. You generate an emotion, it has a frequency. And so the value of using the chi coils and the sound frequencies together, the PEMF and the sound frequencies is you get entrainment. So then the frequencies that you desire to have synchronize with your brain and you'll better be able to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. And if it's these divine states of consciousness, so be it. Then you start to experience them more and more and more. So the key is that you have to find and shift your unconscious thinking habits. So today's webinar has been an introduction to the next phase which is what to do about these thoughts that come up. How do you shift them? How do you actually meditate effectively? What is intentional meditation and what does that mean and how do you use it? And that's going to be the subject of the next uh, webinar that I do, or actually probably my e-course. We're developing an e-course here. It's a, I have it actually as a four-week class to teach you how to be effective in your meditation so that you're mastering your thoughts, you're mastering your feelings, you're re re releasing any of that subconscious stuff that's been holding you back and you start to become free to choose to be love and be peace, be wisdom, be joy on a more consistent basis. So if you have any questions, you can contact me. This is my email address again. And I'd be happy to help you or coach you. And um, I know I'm going to be doing more of these webinars. So I'm very excited to uh, share this information with you. And so the next, so the class is called How to Master Meditation Using Frequencies. And that's going to be what's up next for me. So I'm going to stop my share now. Let's see what happens if I do that and slideshow, close that, so I can see everybody. And if you would like to unmute yourself and you can ask questions, I'd be really grateful. Hi, this is Hi. this is Rick. Hi, Rick. Um, this is a, a, a well done presentation. Thank you very much. It, it filled in a little bit of the holes. Okay. And, I, and understanding. I guess my my main thing that I I get out of it is not this course but the understanding of the of the frequencies i get there but i can't maintain it seems like when i do drop i drop pretty fast and i get caught up in the in the the world that we're living in the chaos and blah 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 of yeah. the, you know and it's it, it's such an uphill climb to maintain it to keep it um, but like you said, if my, I guess my intentions before I set the day does not, I'm not doing that correctly and I'm just going with the flow and then it, it gets a hold of me. That's, that's the hammer. And then that once the hammer hits me, then I like tell myself, come on, this is not real. You're better. You know, don't, mm -hmm. don't accept it. Just shake my head and then move on. And then yeah. it does work, but it's boy it's the controlling of it to, to get you down it's or pull you back I guess that's the main thing that I'm trying to master in, in that way good that's great now what I teach in this class is there's a, basically a three-step process so the first step is you drop in like you said and then you're centered for a minute then all of a sudden something bubbles up and it distracts you. And then you can get, and it's it's either the future or the past. There's very little 
other i mean the only thing that's in the present is joy so it's always the past it's something you're thinking about or feeling and then you become aware oh i'm you become aware of being aware you're aware that you're thinking that then you go oh got it and then you go back to your practice and then it happens again and it's a cycle it's ongoing so it's a it's a the uh the misconception of meditation is that you will experience or think nothing. You really don't ever think nothing. You experience sensations of expansion and greater awareness. And that little bit, the beta brain thing is always there. It's in the background. It just becomes very, 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 very small. Unless there's something else that wants to bubble up to the surface. And isn't it amazing when something bubbles up to the surface and you get caught in it, uh, past, past, future, future, and you go, oh, past. And then you pop out of it. It transformed. It literally, the energy or the frequency of that, that piece of consciousness actually transforms and it becomes the greater you. It becomes the love, the wisdom, the peace. And so we go through this process of becoming more and more aware of being aware and a greater percentage of our awareness then is serenity, peace, joy. And so you're on the right track. And this course will really help you, Rick, because that's exactly what I teach is the how to, because it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to do it consistently. And that's why I also have a coaching practice. Yeah, I mean, it, this it really resonates with me 100% where I'm at, you know, thank you very much. You're welcome. Who else has a question? What do you do about resistance? Ah, I have a whole talk on the comfort zone and resisting that. Okay, think about a rubber band. Okay, you get a rubber band and it and Tracy, I'll get to you in one sec. So you stretch out a rubber band, right? And you're going to put it around paper and it's bigger than it was when you, when it's just a little rubber band, it stretches out, right? Right. And then the thing that holds the paper in place is resistance. The rubber band is holding it using resistance. And eventually over time, a rubber band deteriorates and degrades and then it breaks. And then there's this expansion that happens of the paper. So the consistent, the truth of the matter is you don't resist the resistance. What? It's there is a fact. Oh my gosh, I just love this, this, this uh, little course I do on comfort zone because it really, it's called the rubber band effect. And so it's how to keep this rubber band stretched out so that you get to the point where you can expand into a greater comfort zone by, by maintaining that resistance. I have a little picture of like Stretch Armstrong. He was a, a toy from 20 years ago or something, 40 years ago. And as you're holding that out, then what happens is that rubber band or the resistance breaks. And then you have a breakthrough and you're into a brand new state of consciousness. So don't be afraid of it and don't fight it. Just go, oh, resistance. And then be able to hold that space using things like affirmations and intentional consciousness. Because they're, they're the things that are going to get, keep you stretched out, even though the old habit patterns are still there. You're, it's a transition between the old habit patterns and the new expanded state. Does Thank that you. help at all? Yeah, it helps. And I'm also going to attempt it, as David would say, attempt is a better word than try and see if it works. So, yeah, your speech tonight was very good. It resonated a lot with me and it brought a lot of things into light. Thank you. You're welcome, Mickey. OK, Tracy, you've raised your hand. Would you like to speak? Absolutely. Um, thank you for doing this. I also would say the same thing. This was right on time for me. I was just checking emails and saw it and I said, oh. Let me come on here because I've had my little mini, you clarified for me the yin. I just have the one coil mm -hmm. and I've tried to use it and I've watched some of the videos, the get started and what to do and not to do. But 
this was some good clarification for me because I still, there was nowhere in the packaging that indicated to me what I really had. Hmm. Um, so I appreciate that. And maybe I missed it. You had mentioned earlier that you use just the yin coil for quite some time in the beginning. So mm -hmm. I, I guess I would love for you to tell me a little bit more about, um, I know you said you used it to kind of mellow you out and balance you out, but um, I'm just curious to know what, if you have any suggestions for me in terms of, you know, really getting started and doing it the right way. With the okay, so there is no right way, first of all. It's <laughs> where are you at? So if you're in stress or anxiety, like I was, I tend to be more anxiety-driven, sym uh, sympathetic nervous system. I needed yin because I mm -hmm. wanted to receive. So I needed to be filled up, fill that swimming pool up with beautiful chi energy. So the yin coil was perfect for me. At a certain point, I felt filled up. And then I started using the yin and yang together. And when, I, and when I'm tired, I'll just use yang and that energizes me. So it's mm -hmm. really, what, what is the outcome you want to achieve? Overall, better consciousness. Yeah, and if that's the case, <laughs> so, try both. Try the yin and yang together. And if it's just not working and you're not dropping into your meditative state, then just use the yin and experiment and see if that works better. Okay. And I only have the yin. Day, use both again. Okay. I only have the one. Oh, okay. So you don't have to, to worry about it. If that one would be, <laughs> right. That's what I was asking you. What Did you have any thoughts of, you know, how to effectively use the one by itself? No, so you just keep using it. Okay. You don't, and you're going to feel just fine. Okay. It's, and especially over time. Remember, if there's a cumulative effect here, so consciousness is cum accumulative. You're going to shift all of those old mental habit patterns. I call them thought forms. Mm -hmm. They're going to they're going to be released as you continue to use this. And it's the coils actually do the work, not you trying to make it happen. You're just being responsive and aware of the coils working and the sound frequencies working. Okay, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Carol. Yes, Bill. I'm wondering if you can tell Tracy what frequencies you used when you got started. Yes, that's what I was hoping. But I was going to oh, email yeah, I did her that, I didn't want to hold beginning. up the group. <laughs> yes, in the basic, it's restore and regenerate. Remember I played them in the very beginning of the webinar? I don't think I was tuned in at oh, the beginning okay, yeah, yeah. I probably was so you go to, just in. go to basic and do restore and regenerate okay um you may speak zoom user hi can you hear me yes ma'am hi okay um you said to use those couple frequencies first is there a time or uh, like if you want to get through to certain areas like, should you, um, maybe if you, you're you looking to grow spiritually, but you also want to do abundance, do you recommend a timeline of how you um, integrate other frequencies? Yeah, you got to start to you get to the point where you feel good. Okay. okay, then start working on your stuff, working on your abundance, working on your health, working on expanded consciousness. Um Literally, I like I said, the first month, and it I may have been in a worse condition than you. So you can only, only tell by how do you feel? You know, how do I feel today? And I let my emotions guide me, not my emotion emotions, my sensory emotions. Like, okay, does it feel tight or does it feel painful? Does it feel oh, sad? You know, sometimes when you close your eyes, do you ever get that sense of sadness, mm -hmm. right? And so if it's that, then I'm going to continue to use these ba basic ones, and then I'm going to feel awesome. Yeah, because I guess you're looking more to clear uh, more of the negative mind chatter, you know, those that little voice and the doubts and so on to, to I guess, ground yourself and and have more of that inner peace before you start building other areas is that that's a great way of saying it now um remember 
And I would go over a lot more of this in my course about intention. And if you're a reader, there is a book way back. It's a, it was written in the 70s called The Power of Intention by Shakti Gawain, which gives you a very good description of exactly how to do this. How do you create an intention? How do you know what you want? And then how do you stick to what you want? Okay, I got it. All right, so then you go into it with an intention of, okay, today... I have a I have an event coming up. Oh, it's my sister-in-law's wedding. So I want to be joyful. I want to be relaxed. I want to feel really good. I want to give of myself. I don't want to feel angry or overwhelmed or run into that relative that I don't like and all that kind of stuff, right? So I got this whole scenario in my mind. So I'm going to say, okay, what do I want? Well, I want to feel this and this and this. And so then in my meditation, I'm going to start visualizing that state. What does it feel like to be with these people and be in joy? What's it feel like to be serene in this environment? And so then you're practicing, you're actually rehearsing. It's called mental rehearsal. You're rehearsing the state you want to be in. And then you're using the coils to create that state before you actually go experience it. Great, thank you very much. Thank You're you. welcome. Yeah, and I'd like to add to that because is like there's more than than one of us in each realms. So, if, and that's the part of of broadcasting that and using that ability in another futuristic realm of where you want to be. And it it does play with the universe on that. It, you're you're right on the button. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds like you've been doing this for a long time, Rick. Well, it's I'm I'm I was shy, but I'm I'm working on it. You know, it feels good, it, but it's it's lonely because like-minded people, there's not many, and uh, it's hard to exercise it in in to share. Sharing's caring, right? Yeah. But, and that's that's where it's difficult in my way, but it's coming out. It, things are more more awake now. It's getting there, but you you still kind of go back a little bit. But the nature helps, and these frequencies, yeah. boy, they're a lifesaver. They truly are. Yep, they work. Absolutely. Where are you located, Rick? Oops. Pardon? Where Where are you located? I'm in the UP, Michigan. <laughs> I'm in oh, I'm in Salem, Massachusetts. Talk about being alone. <laughs> <laughs> this is a wicked state. Yeah. Uh, hey, Carol, well, can I make one more comment? You may. Uh, yeah, uh, just for this for Tracy and for I don't know what the other people's themes are, but you know when you're talking about what you do, and, uh, and it's just so wonderful to see how you're doing it and the consistency and how you've taken these coils. But I want to, I said, I don't know, I, I don't know where it came up or how we're listening, but I just want to mention the difference between active listening or active using the coils and passive. And like, I, I think when probably in meditating, we'd call that active. You've got a purpose. Mm -hmm. You're sitting there, you've picked out the right frequency and uh which you want to pick up the right frequency anyway but you're really spending some time with yourself but i'll tell you what uh and i don't know what ever coil everybody has but i do a lot of passive coil using meaning i've got the coils on that's when maybe i'm doing abundance that's when maybe i'm doing yeah. i don't know what i can't think of them right at the mind but they're on my desk and they're in a configuration which carol gave you that that thing where i've got the in coil up and the end coil down and they're just there, but it's playing a lot. <laughs> I play a lot of frequencies throughout the day and just absorb the frequency passively. And I just want to I want to put that on the table. That was a really good point, Bill, and I forgot that. I do that too during the day. R lately I've been doing this thing called NAD, which is an anti-aging. They have there's a whole bunch of they're like frequencies that are related to a supplement or an ingredient or something like that, like ayahuasca or NAD or NMN, or I just found an LSD one today. 
And um, they basically, he's found the frequency of those particular ingredients so you can listen to it and get the benefits. And that's really cool. So that it's easy when you're at your desk to have the coils going and not listen. Just have them on as long as they're connected to your uh, resonant console or your app and the little amplifier is on. Yes, Zoom user who raised your hand. Um, would it uh, be something you could do maybe running the frequency while you sleep or that would not be recommended? That would be, Bill, you want to talk about that? Absolutely. I run the sleep frequency every night uh, and I listen. You know, there's the option to either listen to a frequency or not listen to it. I do a lot more not listening, but we do, I do, there is a way with a splitter and again, I don't know what devices you have where you can hook up the uh, frequency to, to, the, to a speaker. And so in, at nighttime, I put on a, a, the Delta wave in, in the sleep, there's a number of different options. You can either let it rotate through all of them. That's something you'll have to learn to go there that you, you know, you click on it and it'll rotate through all the different, frequencies. or you can just pick one. And I pick this one that's very soothing. It's kind of a uh, high level Delta Theta, I think it's called. And I put that through a speaker. It plays in the background, very soothing. But not only that, I'm, the, the, the coil is right next to me and the speaker's on. Not loud, but enough to... Anyway, that goes all night, all night. And then usually on in the morning as I wake up. <laughs> so yeah, that's... A okay. lot of people, a lot of people use the, for, and, and again, forget the sound if you don't want to, if you just put mm -hmm. on the, have the coil near you. Remember these coils generate out that frequency pretty far. And um, yes, it'll, it'll definitely improve your sleep. No doubt about it. Okay, great. Thank you. That's a good point, Rick, on the water. And uh, David recommends that drink a lot of water while you're doing this. Oh, there was one other thing too, and then I'll get to you, Richard is the detox phenomenon. This happened, we started list, using the coils 24 seven and uh, I started to get sick. I mean, not physically sick, but emotionally, energetically sick, depressed, all that kind of stuff. And then I realized, oh, I've, I've overrun. I've used the frequencies too much. So I stopped doing it for two days and I started again and I've been fine ever since. And then there's one other one. It was something about getting rid of negative influences or something like that. And I played that one for 24 hours and I started getting really, really negative. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, be careful. I mean, be conscious of your state because they, this is real, right? It really is impacting you. So you need to be aware of how you're feeling. Okay, Richard, what is your question? I just have a few comments about my experience with the coils. Okay. Uh, so I, I find that running the Schumann frequencies has uh, been very beneficial to me, like during the day. Yeah. When I'm at my desk at work, I actually have the, the uh, max coils. I have them about eight feet apart, and I'm sitting in between them running the Schumann frequencies, and I just find it, it helps me stay calm and relaxed while I'm working. Um, I also every night I have the the S three coils too in my bedroom, and every night I run a series of programs. I have lung issues, so actually I start out running lung programs, but before uh, it's about a four hour program that I run. Um, I start out with the lung frequencies, and I move on to the uh, I think it's called soothing, and um, that has been tremendous for pain that I've had. And I've had several people who've come visited me who are in pain. And I use the soothing, which was one of the basic frequencies. And everybody that I've used it with, within 15 minutes, if they had musculoskeletal pain, it's gone. It's just gone. Um, and I had, I was having shoulder issues because I, I sleep on my right shoulder and I started running the soothing. That's all gone. All the pain is gone. And um, I just found, yeah, that's been really remarkable. So also I run a lot of the love frequencies because um, I think, uh, you know, whenever you're stressed, as they say, love is the answer to everything. So 
I think puppy and the love frequencies. I just have that playing in the background a lot of the times. That's been kind of my experience anyway. Thank you for sharing that. There was a question here about addiction and sugar and that kind of thing. Inside, I'm looking at this directory I created. Okay, inside Higher Quantum, there is a, a tab called Fitness. And inside Fitness is Green Tea, Garcinia Cambogia, Appetite Suppressant, and Fitness. And those will help with the sugar, for sure. Appetite Suppressant has been great for us. And so that's really good in terms of um, addiction. Um, there's like in abundance happiness, there's stop bad habits. You know, the thing is, there's just so many. And that's why it's helpful to have this little directory so you can remember where they're located. And then I recommend also, if you're of a mind, use use a journal, keep track. So today I used this frequency and this is what I experienced. And or try it for a week. Uh, you're, Boris, I don't know if you guys know Boris, but he did a really great, um, what do you call that, Bill? The practitioner training. And so he talked about Schumann frequencies a lot. He talked about the sun frequency. And then he also talked about the chakras. And I have a lot of information on the chakras. And I use them a lot. Like, so I know I have a little handout, another handout, that you can look at it and figure out, oh, this is how I'm feeling. This is what's going on. This is the chakra to use. And then I'll play that chakra frequency for a week. And so it depends on how important or how uh, enduring the, your situation is, your state, how long you want to use the frequency for, or if you want to just experiment with different ones. But I like the idea of saying, okay, I know that this one did this for me. Like uh, you just said, was, that was very helpful. Okay, and one more person. I love my cheat coils, especially after receiving my upgraded system. I sleep better. Wait a minute, I have to read this this way. Nope. There's too many, I've got too many different deals going on to pay attention to all this. But anyway, you guys, I love you. This was a lot of fun. And, uh, oh, after receiving my upgraded system two months ago, I sleep with mine on every night, never turn my system off. And that's what's happened with me now. I'm able to tolerate it 24 seven. I don't ever get um, overrun anymore. So listen, you guys, just keep on watching these webinars and coming back and learning more. This is the community. For those of you that have felt lonely, like there's nobody like you out there, we're it. We're the community. We're a community of aligned spiritual people that want to transform the planet. And so I'm so happy that you joined tonight and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you guys again. Be sure and check in next week. There's going to be another really great webinar. So that's it for tonight. Thank you so much and blessings to everyone. <laughs>